Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at sharpening images using the Details panel in Lightroom Classic. So first, what is sharpening? In the most general sense, the sharpening sliders are used as a way to fool the eye into thinking that the image is sharper than it really is by adding contrast along edges in an image. The sharpening in the develop module is also referred to as capture sharpening because it's designed to make up for any loss of sharpness when demosaicing a file or when rotating and straightening, as well as performing perspective corrections on an image. This is different from output sharpening, which is done when exporting a photo for a specific device, such as a screen, or to print on a specific paper stock. When applying sharpening, it's best to view an image at 100% to see the effects accurately. This exclamation mark is warning me that we're not previewing it at 100%, so I'll click on it to zoom in. If you prefer to view the image at a different zoom percentage in the image preview area, or if you need to preview two different areas of the image, we can use the disclosure icon to select the square preview icon. I'll hold down the space bar to navigate to another area in the image, then I'll click to display that area at 100% in the details panel. After clicking, the tool's automatically dismissed and I can drag to reposition the image in the preview area. The default sharpening settings work very well and in most instances, you may not even need to make additional adjustments. This is because Lightroom Classic adds a default amount of sharpening depending on the capture device that was used to create the image. So while the slider settings might read the same numeric value for two images photographed on two different cameras, the actual sharpening amount that Lightroom Classic is adding under the hood may differ based on the camera make and model. I'm gonna tap the before and after view so that we can compare the image without any sharpening on the left and with the default amount of sharpening on the right. Then let's take a look at the options. The amount slider adds contrast, so when Lightroom Classic finds an edge in the image, it will make one side of the edge lighter and the other side of the edge darker. The radius slider determines how far away from the edge the contrast is applied. Now, if you have too high of an amount and radius, that can create halos along edges and it can make the image appear almost painterly. But I wanna be sure that we can see the effect of the slider, especially after this video is compressed and then posted online. Now, both the details and masking sliders can help to suppress sharpening along edges of lower contrast. So if I move the detail slider to 100, then there's no suppression of noise and all of the edges in the file are treated equally. As I move the slider towards zero, now we see the sharpening being suppressed in the areas of lower contrast, like the flatter areas in the yellow in the eyes, while the feathers still have the sharpening applied to them. All right, I'm gonna set that to 100, and let's take a look at the masking slider. So at zero, there's no suppression of the lower contrast edges, but if I move the slider towards 100, now we can see the edge contrast being suppressed. So you might be asking why there are two different sliders to suppress sharpening. Well, if you hold down the Option key or the Alt key on Windows, when you're dragging either the masking or the detail slider, Lightroom Classic displays a grayscale preview of the mask used to suppress the sharpening. Notice that the masking slider creates a much more organic looking mask, and the detail slider creates a mask with sharper edges. So as a good rule of thumb, You'll use the detail slider to suppress sharpening in landscape images and use the masking slider to suppress sharpening in portraits. All right, I'm going to double click sharpening to reset the values and then just move the amounts slightly higher and increase the radius. And then I'll leave the detail slider as is. I'll tap the Y key to exit out of before and after view and then click and hold the eye icon to hide the sharpening adjustments and then release the cursor to show them again. Sharpening can also be added using the masking panel to selective areas of images. And I mentioned output sharpening. When you're finished editing a photo and you're ready to export it, you can add output sharpening in the export dialog. And if you're gonna take the image to Photoshop and continue making enhancements, be sure not to add too much capture sharpening because when you're making selections in Photoshop and then adding adjustment layers, for example, 
those types of adjustments can potentially amplify any edge artifacts added by sharpening. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.